Hey, this is uh, part two. Outside. Yeah, different, different setting. <laughs> the director had a change of uh, artistic opinion. So, um, so they were saying you can't cross the border. I can't. I can't cross the border. And um, old, there's many around uh, nearby, but they all turned out to also be local borders. So I have to go to international one. Um, which is about 200 kilometers. So I got to backtrack, and uh, the road he tells me uh, goes through like a really, I mean, I mean, some of those places it feels like they've never even seen a foreigner, kind of. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turned out to be also very hot country. And uh, at one point I stopped um, to uh, get some uh, sugar cane uh, juice and leave my bike in the sun. In just a minute, they squeeze out, and I go, and my GPS has a thermometer. Uh, in it, and I look, and it says 51 degrees. So and like in like in Fahrenheit, that's like 100 and Celsius. But yeah. like, like, in, like in American Fahrenheit, it'd probably be like 120 or something, right? I don't know. I think you said 50. 51, yeah. So <laughs> if if, a hundred, if 40 is about 100, then yeah, it's it's, it's crazy. It was up there, and I mean, I, I it was hot. Like the the previous few days was 40, and you kind of get used to it as long as you know, I'm covering myself up. Except for this part, it's funny because I got gloves here. I have my arm protectors, but this part is left open, but uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it didn't even hit me because I'm moving all the time, you're kind of like an air-cooled engine, you know, so that the faster you move, the more cooled you are, right. um, wow. but just standing in the heat, 50 degrees, and uh, that struck me like, uh, this feels like a desert, but in uh, any case, I managed to uh, push through that, and um, I entered into Vietnam, and uh, there, uh, I slowly made my way towards uh, Saigon um, through a place called Canto, which is a, one of the, like, the second largest city in the south or something like that. But th they've got their famous floating markets, which are really yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah so it's, I, uh, I took a, a day there to cool off and uh, took a tour. Um, and they, they literally take you on the market, they go around. It's, it's, really, it's really worth it. Huh. Um, that was a very nice town and also um, very Buddhist. So there was a lot of uh, temples, and, and uh, nearby there was also uh, subsequently like a lot of vegan places. An Chai yeah. was delicious, yeah, very Sweet. cheap, very delicious food, yeah. Uh, this one I had, um, if you had it, it's, it's basically like a banana a fried in batter, okay. but not too fried, because there's some that are very fried, but this one's just a bit fried. And uh, then they take some coconut milk and they pour it over and sprinkle some peanuts. 5,000 gong. Wow. Incredibly cheap wow. and, and like very a, delicious. It's like 20 cents. Yeah, exactly. So I had three of them, of course, but uh, very, very nice food. I, I would have stayed there for longer. Kanto kind of gave me that uh, Chiang Mai vibe on a smaller level. Okay. It's still a city of a million people. Okay. But. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, I stayed there for three nights, uh, kept re-booking re, uh, my uh, hostel, and then I, I realized, oh, okay, this is starting to become like Chiang Mai. Yeah, yeah. Because that's how right. Chiang Mai started. I was in a hostel, and then I kept rebooking, like, oh, maybe I should get an apartment, and, you know, that grows. But uh, from there on uh, to Saigon, and then uh, just from Saigon, afterwards, been working my way up. Um, so how long were you in Saigon? Oh, just like two days, okay. not not too long. No, I mean, it, it, to me, it just felt like a typical large, big Asian city. Yeah. Um, and uh, I w didn't want to. I've already stayed too long in some places, and I, w I was kind of anxious to already get up north. Um, so I, after Saigon, I continued along the coast. Oh my! Also, some very hot, flat kind of country. Um, but uh, still, Buddhist and a lot of beautiful temples down there. Um, and uh, then along the coast, um, I went to the next big stop, which was uh, Mui Ne. Okay. It's kind of like a coastal. It's it's basically the Russians took over it. Basically, okay. it's oh, become yeah. like an enclave, like you know, stores written in Russian. Wow. And, yeah. It's, it, it, it it was really funny to hear uh, my mother tongue. Uh, so you, know, did you, did you speak some Russian there with some people? Yeah, yeah. Even it's funny because I, I um, before I even entered into the the center of the city, I was outside and I stopped to uh, just to get to buy something at the store. And, and the and the clerk, she, she, I asked how much, and she, um, you know, I didn't ask how much. I, I was I was indicating, and she replies to me in Russian. Wow. Told me the price in Russian. So <laughs> that was really surprising to hear. And. Uh, once I got into Muine, I didn't really, the town itself was just resorts, but outside there's a really 
cool, chill campground and um, able to pitch your tent and straight along the on the on the beach. Uh, so I was there for a couple of days, uh, but you know the, the heat started uh, getting to me. I mean, basically, even since Pattaya, it's been like 35, 40 plus days nonstop. Uh, I mean, no rain, of course. It's, it's like all over dry season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so like I'm wet every day, but it's just purely sweat. And it's also a bit of that coastal humidity, so it's not really evaporating. It gets to you. And uh, I uh, started to go up to Dalat, which is the uh, city up in the mountains. Yep. Really great, um, much cooler, like uh, 25 degrees. Famous for coffee. Coffee, yeah, that's <laughs> right. I wasn't there long enough to go to the coffee tour. Okay. But um, some guy at my hostel went, and they said they've got. Uh, um, like some of the most expensive coffee in the world, like the the ones that they feed to these like feral cats. Right. right. Yeah, but the, I mean, like historically, it would have been like wild right, uh, droppings, yeah. right? Because it's in the poop that they that they, yeah, they get right. them. But uh, he showed me pictures, and it was sadly like in cages. Yeah. So it's become much more exploitive and, and sure. commercialized. The weasel coffee. Yeah. The weasel coffee, exactly, exactly. But I did try the coffee there, um, just. Uh, when I was biking off the side of the road, and yeah, it's it's very strong. I yeah. mean, it was nice because um, you literally have the coffee trees like 20 meters away, oh. and you're drinking it right there. And it's, wow. of course, that Vietnamese drip coffee, nothing. They don't even add, um, find some places here, once by mistake, they added condensed milk. I didn't expect it. Yeah. But for the, but, uh, for the most part, in the South, it's just it's pure rock. espresso kind of just drip coffee. Nice. So very that, strong. I did not know that. And, um, Man, it felt it felt like I was on an amphetamine. Like your 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 mind is racing. You can you can feel your heartbeat through Dude, your forehead. Dude, the first time I had coffee here in the old in Vietnam in the old quarter, it was it was labeled uh, strong or something like that. For like two or three hours, I was I wasn't hallucinating, but I would, it kind of felt like some kind of a drug. I was just kind of it was super hot. Yeah. And also, I didn't eat eat much that day, but I was kind of. Oh, you're little, you're wired. You're tweaking yeah, like this, yeah. and uh, I mean, I'm on the bike, so. <laughs> It, it kept me going, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 really strong. I mean, I think they do the coffee right here in Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, but the lot was also great because it um, was much cooler. The temperature dropped to 28, 24. And it's funny because even some of the locals, they started to wear like parkas and, and, huh. and jackets. It was it was really unexpected. But uh, the lot had beautiful. Um, agricultural greenhouses and terraces I mean they grow a lot of fruits and veggies there and uh, mm. by far the best avocado I've ever had yeah it's I don't know if you've seen it um, it's kind of like uh, starts off as a regular avocado and then it kind of grows it's very long okay yeah like almost a zucchini but very very creamy mm. um, and um, I was there for two days um, just to rest because I mean those mountains were pretty tough it's, it, it sits at about 1,500 meters elevation, so it's it's much more cooler and tempered up there. But sadly, I had to descend, um, and I was going to Nha Trang, um, and uh, that is by far one of the, the prettiest uh, roads I've taken because mm. um, you're basically going down from a mountain, but really. The mountain that you start off off, like that that plateau where the, 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 the lot sits, um, it kind of ends sharply. Mm -hmm. So you see for 50 meters all the way to the coast. Wow. I mean, you can even see the coast because it's the humidity mm -hmm. kind of 50 kilometers. 50 kilometers wow. off. Yeah, yeah. But oh. all the way to the coast. And I mean, the humidity you can't see that far, but it was spectacular. And I mean, I was descending down that mountain for a solid 40 minutes. Wow. Nonstop. Yeah, it, it was beautiful. Um, and then, you know, once I entered Natron, big city, it was touristy, also kind of like a uh, Russian resort town, mm. massive. Um, and uh, from there, it was um, a race to get to Da Nang um, because I uh, wanted to uh, start applying for my Chinese visa and uh, Da Nang had a consulate, so I was trying to get that done uh, sooner than, than later. Um, but. Uh, uh, after I made it to Da Nang, um, it turned out that the consulate there um, isn't really a consulate. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's got no address and show up. Mm. And, uh, uh, I actually had a local try to search it on their phone in Vietnamese. I show up, it's an unmarked building. Um, there's just one guard outside with an AK.